Hello, people. Welcome and thank you for tuning in for our Battery Hubs channels live by design series. Your weekly dose of transformative business ideas and solutions where we bring you entrepreneurs, business owners and experts from the financial and other industries on how they grow their businesses, build up their influence and more importantly, make a difference and impact beyond the financial industry. So stay tuned and engage with us to learn how these leaders and experts got to where they are today and discover their X Factor. Now, I'm your host, Shakti, certified and qualified to bring you satisfaction, a whole lot of action with our guest speaker for the next one hour. Now, today I'm thrilled to have Michael Lowe, who have been a practicing lawyer since 1992 and currently a partner at Clifford Law. Now, Michael's main area of work is family and divorce law, but a spin-off from his work is legal advice as to post-death issues. Now, from his experience, many parents in the midst of divorce worry about how to manage their assets and wealth when their children are still young. Now, the concerns are more than that of financials and often to practical aspects like who to manage their estate and what age would their children be equipped to manage their inheritance? How would they further their studies? And what if they undertake a path which is not what is expected? So after 28 years of practice, one thing Michael has realized that how you know, one can plan our death or rather post death is often or if not always just as important or more important than how we live. Now, do engage with Michael during our live chat as he shares the importance of estate planning and why planning post death is often just as important or more important than how we live. So with that, let me not delay and have Michael up on our live show. Hi, Michael. Hi, morning. Morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm all good, Michael. Uh, thanks, and, thanks uh, for having me. I'm, I'm very blessed that you, you would think of my humble name to appear with <laughs> you uh, this morning. No, Michael, thank you so much. You know, admit your busy schedule. You know, you are more than willing to come forward to share, um, you know, so many uh, of things from your expert uh, experience. Thank you so much. Well, what little bit that I can help, I will try to help. <laughs> thank you michael and and what's more great was that you know we firmed up this live chat during another live chat that we had last week so you know that's yeah. awesome you came online i requested yeah. and you were like more than willing to you know that was really you know uh, i got really thank you you know you made it so easy for me you know oh, to, no, to have no, you no, don't, worry about that. don't worry about that yeah so michael you know uh, a brief introduction of yourself and uh, you know maybe about your journey behind your current success Oh, okay. Firstly, I wouldn't say I'm successful. Uh, happier more than not, that's true. Uh, when you said that I was uh, have been practicing for 28 years, my eyes popped out. You mean so long? Oh my goodness, I never really <laughs> thought about that. Uh, uh, I, I, I was qualified as a lawyer not too long ago in 1992. And uh, from there, I've been hopping around and i started this law firm about 15 yeah 2020 15 years ago uh with a group of people uh things have changed i'm still here in clifford law uh, after 15 years um and for some strange reason um uh, even though i never really planned on taking on family law or divorce law it it just snowballed you no know, one client led to another, led to three, and then you realize, my goodness, there are a lot of unhappy people out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, given that, okay, right now I'm married, happily married. Uh, I have two boys. Uh, one is mid twenties, and the other one is hitting his twenties, uh, going to NS soon. So in a sense, I've reached a different stage in life, unlike before, where you're single, starting out marriage, starting out your family with one child, starting a family with two children. Then in between, as your children grow up, when they when they young toddlers, mid primary, then secondary, all have different needs, all have different focuses, all have different pressures in your life, and all this while working. Now, in a sense, okay, life is a little bit easier as they become adults, but a little bit pitiful too because I miss them as children. So this is yeah. where I am right now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that that's true. I mean, I always get advice, uh, you know, from a lot of parents saying that you know. Uh, spend as much time and quality time with your kids while you can because once they are busy with their own life you find that sometimes you will miss those days where you know you, you can spend a lot of time so uh, i can really you know resonate where you are coming from when yeah. it comes to family yeah. <laughs> and and michael a bit on on the services of uh, clifford law you did say that it's oh, family yeah. law yeah so okay. you know maybe, For me, maybe a bit... my, my, my focus 
okay, intentionally or otherwise, happens to be a lot of divorce. Uh, even as we speak now, I just finished uh, a round of uh, instructions from a divorce client. You know? I won't say what, but it's really messy. Uh, apart from that, uh, my partner does a lot of uh, motor injury cases. Uh, and uh, our, our firm get, gets reported in the papers uh, every so often uh, for uh, large settlements uh, of cases. Uh, besides this, as a spin-off, I also do a fair bit of, may I say, life planning work. I don't want to use the word post-life or post-death. It sounds a bit paisa, you know. More like, you know, uh, life planning work. Um, like, for instance, uh, draft uh, pre preparation of uh, lasting power of attorneys, uh, preparation of wills, uh, also from time to time, and this is the sad part, taking part in litigation uh, in yeah, post-death post -death, uh, conflicts, especially uh, with uh, large families, okay, where uh, with or without the will, sometimes there will be disputes. And then I have, I have taken part in my fair share of disputes, gone through, to, uh, through my fair share of hearings, and, uh, and, and to see the judge's frustration. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, like, oh my, you know. Of course, they, they try to keep it on even keel. You know, just to, it, it's quite sad like, when, when family members start going at each other. You know, just to remember that when they were children, they were, they, they were hopefully they were close. <laughs> now, they can't stand each other. So, <laughs> that's basically some of the work that I do. Right. And uh, just to uh, inform the viewers, and I, I've personally worked with Michael, uh, and, and, and the only reason why I'm always comfortable with Michael is uh, he's one person that I can openly talk to, and uh, you know, he, I, I like your sense of humor in terms of you know uh, how you share certain information with me, Michael, and I'm always grateful for that. You know, you don't make me feel that I'm talking to a lawyer because the mindset is lawyers are serious people, you know. But I think I'm a lawyer, man. Where, where, where? <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, th I think that's the, the, the key thing. I always enjoy uh, um, working alongside with you or, you know, having chats with you. So, uh, you. Michael, you. now that uh, we spoke about, you know, uh, um, uh, life planning, yes. you know, uh, I would like to just, you know, ask you, you know, from, from, from your experience. Now, why is estate planning important for individuals and business owners? I know it's two uh, different domains, but, you know, maybe you can share with us. Okay, may I reverse it first? I'd like to talk about business owners first. I yes, think. Please. Uh, when business owners all right, start off their business, of course, I fully understand your main aim is to succeed in the business in what you've chosen to do. And there will be always stresses, like for instance, uh, currently COVID-19 uh, downturn in, in business traffic. You have to balance with your outgoing and your inflow, how to plan forward. But uh, I think many, I won't say all, uh, many forget that at the end of the day, life is indeed fragile. Fragile. Mm. You'll never know. Uh, just the other day, I was chatting with a friend on Facebook, and then he just mentioned, in short, to give you a, an example, he was just eating durian, and suddenly he received a call from his brother. His father met with an accident, just like that, because a taxi oh. ran a red light. Yeah, crashed into him. Okay, fortunately, no, no serious injuries. But there you have it, just like that. A taxi uh, uh, misses a red light, crashes into you. You think you have the right of way on a green light, and there you are, your, your car's all gone. Things like this happen to us when we least expect it, okay? Mm. Uh, so either uh, prematurely, okay? Uh, but if you believe in religion, maybe it's, maybe it's your time to go. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Uh, if not, then as you grow older, okay, there will come a time when you need to let go. Whether you want to let go before you pass away or you let go, which is a must when you pass away, then what happens? What happens to your business? If your business is, is a sole proprietorship, you have to worry. Your responsibility for your clients, number one, what's happening to them? Your responsibility to your debtors, you know, the who, who you owe, your, your creditors and your, your debtors. What will happen to them? Okay, that's a business side. More importantly, what about your family? All right. How are they going to deal with this? Because human nature is such, when one person does something wrong to you, they don't legally just go after them. Who they target? The family. You mm. know, 
let's say they discover that the eldest child happens to be uh, some professional, somebody, you know, a debtor or a creditor may just come knocking at the door, hey, your dad passed away, what are you going, what are you going to do about this? I'm not saying that these are lone sharks, inverted commas, but it's a, it's, it's a natural human reaction, like, who's going to pay me? Uh, my business, who's going to supply me? Uh, you're the eldest son, you better look after this. Or you're the wife, you better look after this. All right. So I think business-wise, that's what I would like to highlight. Very few people think the day after you pass away, what happens? Okay. Back to the family, which is sometimes related to business, sometimes not. For those who are their own businessmen, like me, yes, the first scenario, okay, is it's is act. But a lot of people are uh, working stiff, so to speak. You know, you work for a living, all right? You have an income. Uh, then you build up maybe your CPF or what have you, and then you're very happy with your job. Luckily for you, your children are smart enough. Okay, PSLE, a few A's here and there. Secondary school. Uh, a quite good secondary school, A levels, a few A's here and there, university not so bad. Everything is happy, hunky dory, not so bad. A few tuition things here and there, not so bad. Then something happens to you. Then the family is in a lurch. The eldest child, like, like my son, is halfway through university. Okay, what about the fees? Because you passed away, suddenly the income stream stops. Right? Mm. Your employer may or may not have a pension plan for you, I don't know there may or may not be extra money coming in. Your bank account, for some strange reason, is in your sole name. No mm. money is coming in. Then what happens? Apart from that, the next problem about uh, importance of, of planning after passing away, life planning, is that for every child that you bear, the character will be different from every other child. If you happen to have a sole child, maybe it's easier. Uh, maybe we are we are approaching the generation where having one or two children is uh, is 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 the norm. But I have encountered I've got a very close friend, seven children. I've encountered somebody else with six children. There's no guarantee that all of them will think the same. There's no guarantee that all of them would would understand the situation the same. If you don't plan well, the end result could very well be a splintering of your family beyond repair you will have one camp versus another camp. No, daddy thinks like this. No lah, daddy always thinks like this. You might split into three camps. And then at the same time, if you, if you leave your spouse behind, your wife or your husband, she's caught in the center. Or you're caught in the center. All because there was not enough planning. I'm not saying that planning will fix everything, but at least it will manage as much as possible, as much as foreseeable. The small things that happen here and there can't be helped, can't be helped or what, what to do. But at least you've managed the best that you can foreseeably. Right. And, and uh, Michael, in your own personal experience, you know, uh, have there been cases where you have seen, you know, implications or, you know, such things happening within families where no yes. proper estate planning? Uh, yes. Um, there's one particular case uh, still ongoing. What happened was uh, the... I think I can describe it this way. Both parents died intestate, leaving the uh, HDB flat to be divided amongst, I think, six or seven children, of which two, shall I say, uh, because they came out of a custodial, a custodial situation, so they have no employment, and they have said that they want to live in mummy's and daddy's flat okay, until they get on their feet. But that was like 10 years ago. <laughs> They're still living there. Okay. So there's this camp who wants, who wants the flat to remain undistributed under interstate succession laws okay, to benefit these two. But there is another camp who say, no, we should sell this as soon as possible, divide the proceeds, and they can find their own place. But mm. once you divide the proceeds, and it's a very old flat, not a very big flat, there's not enough for either of them to get their own place. So now they've got this gigantic jam. Now they're going to court for a judgment as to whether the majority is able to hold on to the flat or after so long, the flat ought to be sold. And what are the consequences? So th this one life case right now that I'm handling. Okay. So, uh, I mean, like what you say, uh, different children, I mean, their thought process, their situations may be different uh, within the family yes. members. So, so not all yes. of them may agree to the situation. 
So in, in this case, uh, um, Michael, uh, you know, so uh, let's talk about estate planning itself, right? I mean, uh, normally, you know, when we talk about estate planning, it seems like a very big uh, planning, you know, estate planning, you know. Uh, but what are the tools? Because there are a lot of tools within estate planning that you've got to look into. So maybe you want to just tell us some of these tools uh, that are used in estate planning. Okay. Well, Historically yeah. speaking, there has always been one... If, okay, the word tool is a very modern use. Oh, one method, and that was to write your will. Because once you pass away, you're not here to answer questions. So your will, even though drafted when you're alive, doesn't take effect until the instant that you pass away. And in your will, you set out your directions, your instructions from something as uh, as expected as the finances. Okay, the, everybody, everybody knows that the will, okay, will have finances. It's a very rare will that doesn't talk about finances and everything else. But that's not it only. In the will, there could be further directions, practical directions as to how certain things uh, should be done. Okay. Uh, it, even as something uh, as uh, ordinary as, okay, maybe it's also financing, giving of a gift, uh, mm. arrangement to look after, ah, yes, for instance, uh, the instructions that uh, whatever it is, mummy should never be sent to an old folks home. Therefore, okay, I would like to plan this way. Simple uh, uh, instructions like that can be mm. in a will. There is no hard and fast rule what should be in a will. Perhaps the guiding principle is, remember, this is your last National Day speech, so to speak. Whatever you want to say, please say, because it will be too late when your eyes do not open. Mm. And Michael, I do remember there was this example that uh, you shared during one of the seminars that we conducted uh, in yes. Suntec. Um, where you know the father, the will became a love letter. The father had a letter yes. for individual beneficiaries. Yes. and uh, also a reason why some maybe seem to be getting a bit more compared to the other where one son yes. was actually yeah so you know yes. maybe you want to share this as an example of how a will can be planned in such a way that you give a yes. rational why you know yes uh actually this uh my advice came out because it so happened that the uh mother okay wanted to give an uneven division of of the assets uh, because uh, the, her husband had ha passed away quite some time ago. So when she passed away, instead of an even Stephen division, like we think, she had intentionally divided it larger for the daughter than for the son. Again, favoring the daughter and not uh, Asian culture favoring the son. So I happened to just joke, wow, you're very modern, huh? you, your, your daughter's your favorite, huh? Then she, then she said, actually no not really i love them equally you know then then the conversation started going along then i paused and asked then why are you giving your daughter you know more than your son then she said oh that's because my son you know like boys la, always playful la, you know primary school never study secondary school never study junior college never study when it comes to ns uh, university cannot get into local u bo you no know, i had to like mortgage here mortgage there borrow here borrow there send him to university i pay a lot for his tuition no whereas my daughter so quiet no tuition pop 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 a so secondary school pre u university she got to the course that she wanted and now she's working very happy i spent so little on her so i thought if i give even then not that she will but i don't want her to come away feeling like wow even though she hit the my my brother has cost you so much you still give even now ah. you know where's the fairness in the world not that she would but the mother didn't want to have the possibility so she balanced it this way that's when I said, in that case, why don't you add two or three lines to explain? Dear son, not that I love you less, but I've spent so much for you already. I hope you understand I'm giving your sister a bit more. Not that I love your sister a bit more, but, you know, I spent a lot for you. <laughs> in short, lah, I hope you understand. So phrases like that do help explain. And if not, to heal risk, 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 at least not start a rift you know so yeah. wills can do that as well and very few people understand that yeah and 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 the thing is um i think there's a lot of thought process like in this example that you see you know when you probe and ask questions why certain decisions are made 
I think this is where people always find that you know, uh, or you know, there's always time for this. Um, yes. You know, and and they procrastinate the, the the process of estate planning or writing a will and so on. So uh, you know, I personally have met a, a couple of uh, my existing clients that I talk to in the financial planning industry, uh, who did told me that you know, hey, it's okay. You know, I'm still young for the will and everything. And uh, sadly, I had an uh, uh, incident where um, the husband, uh, you know, uh, had a very major accident, and and you know he, you know, he, uh, a lot of things were not done. And, and in his case, he was still around, he was still around, but they faced another dilemma uh, where he was around, but uh, he had total permanent disablement. So in this case, uh, uh, you know, that's where a lasting power attorney actually was important. Yes. LPA. So in this case, in will planning, is the LPA part of the process of uh, estate planning as well? Okay, a bit of a uh, background. See, yeah. the problem with old English common law, as far as life planning is concerned, is that there was only the will as your document or tool, and that only uh, took effect after death. There's always this interim period, okay, where mm. you're hale and hearty and mentally sound, and you're passing away. If it so happens to be a very short period because of illness, may not be an issue. But as yeah. we grow older nowadays, my grandmother's 104. To give you an example, who would have thought, right? Uh, we are encountering a situation which the government rightly recognized very early on. You will have more and more people hitting the situation where they will not pass away because they are incredibly healthy. Mm. But mentally speaking, they cannot manage themselves. When you speak to them today, they talk about childhood as if it were yesterday they cannot remember 20 minutes in the future what they did 20 minutes ago so when they sign a will or sign a document today would they remember signing it tomorrow in which case will this document be valid if this document is not valid then the domino effect takes place then whatever has been planned may not be valid then other people would have been paid or not paid and what happens so the LPA which was created uh, maybe a decade ago I can't remember well, it, it is an artificial creation. It is not a natural legal e evolution in the past uh, thousand years from English law. It's an artificial creation to plug this gap. In the event that you will not pass away for many, many, many more years, and yet your life still needs to be managed, both physically, right, whether you need to be hospitalized or looked after physically, or financially, how to get the finances to look after you and the family can be managed without going through the difficult court process of getting a court order to empower uh, certain members of the family to do so. So the LPA, is a, the irony is this, it's fairly easy to fill up. Okay, some of the questions don't make really much sense unless you really think about it, but it's fairly easy to fill up, fairly easy to sign, fairly easy to fill up uh, with the office of the public guardian, but very few people want to take it up because they think it doesn't affect them. So that's a mm. second uh, tool, if I may, you know, uh, talk, talk about. The third, the third tool, not so much as a legal tool, is actually your group of people, Sakti, the financial planners. See, the irony of, uh, of the situation is this. As a lawyer, I only meet my client once at most twice. You only tell me a situation once at most twice. I'll try to get, get my head around it as best as I can in that one hour or two hours when I meet with you on the phone and do your will. After the will, I don't see you ever again. If, if yeah. when you pass away, your executor remembers me and brings it to me, that's the only time I ever see you again, so to speak. But the financial planners like your group of people, okay, from my experience, you literally uh, uh, walk with your client through the stages in life. You know, from before marriage to marriage, to first child, second child, you know, and things like that, first job, second job, third job, promotion, okay? So the third one would be your people giving advice as to what is the best kind of financial management that will fit them from time to time as their life changes. As lawyers, we are ill-prepared, okay? We don't do your money numbers for you. How do we know that maybe this financial instrument is best for your eldest, elder child now hitting primary school? This financial instrument is better for your child at one year old. I can't do that. I'm not in finances. But if you tell me that arising from anything happening to me, okay, these will be the funds that will be released. I want you to be given this way. Yes, I can step in. Lawyers will step in to draft those documents like the will, the LPA maybe, 
but when it comes to the third limb, the actual money financial products, I, I really don't like to use the word products, the financial plans that you professionals come forward with, that will be the third limb, so to speak, okay, to, to, to wrap up the idea of life planning, financial planning, death preparation. Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, that's the reason why initially I, I, I use the word tools because, uh, um, you know, apart from wheels, you know, even uh, we, we look at uh, insurance products are still tools to be able to, you know, achieve the outcome that uh, individuals want in their planning itself. Yeah. We have a question uh, uh, from one of our viewer. Uh, basically, it's Jackie. He says, hi. Uh, thanks, Jackie, for joining us. And um, he has a question for you, Michael. And uh, it is basically, hi, Michael. Can I say without real writing, um, will it involve more legal costs? Uh, uh, if more, what is the estimate cost? Okay, uh, can I say that without will writing will involve more legal costs? Well, it depends on which uh, stage you're uh, referring to. Um, if a person passes away with a will, right, uh, the, the legal process you know, to get uh, his uh, estate management to be recognized, so to speak, in law is called mm. probate. All right? mm. But when the person passes away without a will, okay, such a legal management will be called letters of administration. If there is no dispute, okay, putting aside, okay, the distribution, which some children may feel is unfair, okay, the legal cost for both is about the same. The paperwork is just about the same. Uh, the 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 legal processes to get either a probate or letters of or letters of administration for non-will, is about the same. Not so complicated. All right, uh, costs would increase if the estate complex where the lawyer has to investigate. Okay, you may have, uh, okay, not to sound offensive or anything, I do apologize. You may have, you know, gifts from your relatives from India. For some strange reason, you know, your wife says, hey, I remember Sakti has a property, you know, uh, in, in India given by the uncle somewhere. Yeah, but I remember seeing the paper. Oh my goodness. Then I have to write to India, engage Indian lawyers. Yes, legal costs will increase that way. But it will also affect uh, uh, letters of administration as well because that's gathering information about assets. Okay. okay. The one area which would definitely increase legal costs would be if there is a dispute. With the will, if it is clearly drafted with no ambiguity, there would hardly be any legal dispute because it's there. You want to fight for what? Because you, any lawyer will tell, you know, the unhappy brother, you're gonna you're gonna die standing lah, because at the end of the day your father really wrote in paragraph number one you will only get $100. What do you want to fight for? You know? But in a letters of administration, it may increase because whatever father said before he died is my word against my brother's word, mm. against my sister's word, against mm. my mother's word. Let's go to court and find out who is more fit to be the administrator, administrator of the estate. That could and will increase legal costs because before the paperwork to recognize the management is even started, there is a battle. Whereas in the will, you can start almost as of right. Mm. Right. Uh, thanks, Michael. And Jackie, I uh, hope uh, this uh, answers your question. Uh, feel free, you know, if you have any questions or, you know, just give a thumbs up if the question has been answered. Okay, he has another question. Uh, uh, what about the time difference to get appropriate and administration? Is there a okay. major time uh, having a will and no will? Uh, for letters of administration in a non-will situation, conceptually, conceptually, there could be uh, a time lag because you may not know what your father has. Mm. Okay, the, the eldest brother, the, the family may not know what the father, the, the deceased father has. So the lawyer with the family will have to investigate. Um, I use the phrase firebomb letter bomb so uh, i i will have to write to all the major uh, uh, banks that practice it, uh, that carry on business in singapore okay maybe you know somebody will remember hey i remember you know daddy having a very small account in this obscure bank offshore bank with a branch somewhere in raffles place okay okay i'll write another letter there some of them respond very quickly no don't have no don't have some of them will take ages to respond 
some of them may not even respond until two reminders when they where they apologize. Oh, very sorry about this, but the officers on leave. Yes, but there is an there is an account of X amount of dollars. So mm. the timing for a uh, for a letters of administration situation conceptually could drag because of that problem. Then the family needs to make a, a decision like, okay, okay, uh, we've already waited nine months. I uh, cannot uh, I cannot wait for. We, we we just go on and assume there's no account there. If it, there's an account there, we worry about that later. But in a will. Technically speaking, all right, most if not all of the deceased assets should be in there. Of course, yes. if the will was written when he got, just got married at twenty-one, and he never changed it, uh, maybe just at marriage, I apologize, at marriage, and never changed it, and then until now, and then uh, maybe the wife will realize, Alama, the will is twenty-one years old. He has all sorts of bank accounts besides this bank account. Then there could be conceptually a delay that way. But if the will is drafted constantly and reviewed constantly. Okay, and then you realize that wow, it looks like most of these uh, of daddy's assets are all in there. Then the family needs to make an executive decision. Forget it. You don't need to write any letters because these are all his assets. Okay, that will take much quicker. Right, and uh, uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, Jackie, once again, you know, if it answers your questions, please just give us a thumbs up. Uh, or if you have any uh, other questions, please feel free um, talk to us. Uh, and and now that we talked about this. Um, you know, Michael, uh, you did cover some of these areas, but let's talk about some risks of not planning uh, for one's estate. Um, you know, you did cover, you know, highlight some part, but uh, uh, let's talk about maybe the first one is maybe risk of dying in the estate. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is where uh, you are talking about, uh, or you shared an example where the the, the person's family, or, or you know, uh, it will be actually uh, a will, or you know, in the estate will be as per whatever there's already a written law and it won't be according to the wishes of the deceased um, uh, desire of how it has to be split, right, within the family. Ah, okay. Uh, maybe if I can categorize the risk of dying intestate uh, into maybe two or three, or formulate it as I go along. The first one would be a practical risk. Um, if there is no will, then there is uncertainty as to how uh, the finances of the deceased is to be managed. Mm. Uh, the uh, worst situation would be if, let's say, the deceased was an old school patriarch of the family and everything is completely in his sole name. Everything, technically speaking, is jammed. So, the family is left in the lurch. So that's one risk. Uh, um, how shall I say? This, this came to me rather late in life. Money is not an end in itself. It is, ah, it is a tool. Correct. It is a tool. You use money to do certain things, to become happy, to get certain things, to, be, to, to feed your family. In and of itself, okay, it is... It is a difficult creature. Now, if you die intestate, then the very tool that your family needs to survive is jammed, lost, mm. locked up. So on that practical basis, if you die intestate, you then make life very difficult for your family. If you're young, your debts will be a big headache. If you're mm. older, if you have no more debts, it may not be a problem. It may be a matter of cash flow. You, uh, in, in modern day 21st century Singapore, unfortunately, it is impossible to live on fresh air and sunshine. There will be a minimum, you know, level of expenses to pay. You might be able to delay one or two months, but after a while, you'll still need to pay your electricity, your hand, your handphone, your internet charges, yeah. you know, etc. Where's the money coming from? Intestacy gives you that problem. The other one category of the risk is more um, familial, if I may use a phrase, uh, more uh, relationship, not so much financial. Okay, and and I think it is just as important because at the end of the day, as anybody who passes away will tell you, money isn't everything. Money is important, yes, but it should be kept in its place. What's more important, your family relationships? What's more important? Okay, your your 
your overall well, overall well-being with everybody else in your life. Dying without a will runs the risk that in your death you will tear your family apart. So these are the two risks that comes to mind, okay, in in the broad sense. Right, and and uh, is there a risk um, now pertaining to also you know estate planning itself? Because earlier we talked about you know. Uh, to be aware of your assets and so on while you are planning for your will, which is part of the estate planning process, right? Uh, are there chances where, you know, it could also end up that you have negative estate without you even knowing? Um, theoretically, yes. Uh, if you happen to be over leveraged in terms of taking out loans to acquire your assets, uh, and especially if uh, your the asset that you purchase has dropped in value, Okay, just as an aside, I just hand, I'm in the midst of finalizing a divorce. They've discovered they overpaid for their, uh, I think, executive masonette. I'm not sure. Those huge flats. Okay. And, and now that they've divorced, uh, in the, when, when the flat uh, will be disposed of in the open market in three to six months' time, it will be so negative, they will not even have enough to pay back the CPF, uh, uh, even without interest. Wow, you see, okay. it's that bad. Okay, so conceptually, there would be a negative. Uh, and that's where the third limb, okay, where you come in. And this mm. is the risk of, of not financial planning. Not so much not writing a will, but financial planning. If you yeah. realize that there is a possibility that you're leaving your family in the lurch as far as having a negative assets concern, which will happen. Now, COVID-19, you never know. Okay. Uh, j just as an aside, uh, uh, this one, uh, the MAS has come forward to say, oh, banks should, you know, curtail their dividends, etc. Then suddenly all the bank shares drop. Ah! <laughs> you never know. Okay. Well, yeah. the banks, I think it would do anything, but just temporary, perhaps. <laughs> but you get the idea. You know, the market yeah. forces go up one day, go down the other day. Now, we are, we are looking at, at market forces being down for the next one or two more years. Passenger traffic won't go up until 2024. All these negative, uh, negative views. The assets that you've accumulated during the good times will start going negative. And that's mm. where your professional people come in to provide protection in the event that anything happens. Okay, the family is not without a home. Of course, the HDB flat is protected, okay, especially if, if it is an HDB loan. But nevertheless, it's still stressful for, let's say, your wife okay, to survive you and still worry that as a matter of reputation, my late husband has left debts in the amount of, let's say, one or two million that he cannot pay. Mm. The, the transference of guilt to the wife and to the family is real. Okay, it's yeah. not a matter of, oh, my, my, my wife, my husband's dead, I don't care. No, it's real. Wives will take on the mental guilt that their husband had failed in life financially uh, before passing away. And your third limb will help, if not I won't, if not completely safe, if I, if I may use the phrase uh, loosely, all right, alleviate the situation. She will look forward to, oh, thank goodness I have money coming in, may not be able to pay all of my, of my husband's creditors, but at least I can offer you know, a large enough haircut that they live happier than not rather than cursing me and my family. So your limb, your, your side you know, of the protection of the tools will be very useful. Right. And um, also looking at the other tools, uh, we have a question from uh, Jackie. Uh, he was actually asking, can nomination for CPF uh, and insurance supersede the will writing? Uh, that means what's written in the will? Nomination for CPF. Okay, CPF, I will tell you at 101%. Uh, <laughs> your CPF nomination is independent of your will. Mm. Okay, you can write in your will that you would like to benefit the Singapore Zoo, but if your CPF you've nominated your father, your father gets it. Okay, ah. so uh, will and CPF two separate matters. Uh, which also brings to mind the fact is this: just because you think you've named it in your will, okay, that I want my CPF to be given, still not good enough. You need to do it in the CPF system. Hmm. Okay. Of course, you know, if you write in your will, if you have a smart lawyer, might be able to do something legally in court, maybe. But don't go through that trouble. Go to the CPF system, use their forms, you know, sit in front of the officer in the green uniform, sign or whatever it is, and give it to them and be safe for your CPF. Insurance, yeah. nomi insurance nomination. Okay. 
there are two. One is irrevocable and one is uh, revocable. Yep. Irrevocable, okay, when you form a trust, you can't. All right, there's a law on it. It's passed in parliament. You cannot. Mm. You can spend 15,000 pages in your will saying why you want it to be revoked. But unless you revoke it formally in court, perhaps with a court order, you can't. The irrevocable, theoretically, yes. But there are specific guidelines as to exactly what you need to do in your will to name it precisely before your revocation, if I may use that word loosely, will be recognized by the court uh, that, uh, that to supersede your nomination uh, in the insurance policy. But mm. having said that, assuming that the will is not written on the deathbed bed, okay, and if it is written, uh, let's say, when my client is hailing hearty, Please, for goodness sake, don't give your family a heart attack. If you want to change the nomination, please call your agent now. <laughs> change the nomination. At most, mirror it in your will. So there's a consistency. But don't just use your will to upset everything that you've done in the last five years. Then, mm. then you, you're going to create uncertainty. Not that it will not be resolved in court. It's just that, eh, but he nominated uh, elder son five years ago. Eh? In his will, now he wants to nominate the second son. Why like that? Uh, only five years, what? Please, if you have time and if you have the uh, context, make everything consistent in your life. It, it lessens inconsistency and problems <laughs> when you pass away, you, if you know what I mean. All right. Yeah, which is true. I, I mean, that's where, you know, you, you just uh, reduce all ambiguities and make sure that everything is consistent. Yeah. And, yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, uh, actually goes to our next question, actually, you know, uh, one of the questions was, you know, how can a financial planner certified in estate planning uh, be of help before coming over to you, you know, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a lawyer? I think, um, yeah, I, I think this is something that is always a question. Uh, for example, when I started this industry as a financial planner um, 11 years ago, time flies uh, from my military experience. You know, my experience was, oh, you know, I just go out there, meet people, tell them, you know, if anything happens to you, please buy insurance and so on. You know, it was it was how it was. But along the years, I realized, you know, that it's more than that. You know, it's, it's really looking into the planning, like what uh, you said, Michael, you know, um, list out the kind of things that you want to, you know, your inventory of things that you want to put on your wheel. You know, it's a bigger picture of it. So in this case, Michael, from your experience, how can a financial planner um, actually help? Uh, clients out there before even they come to the to the lawyer, you know, to start planning for their will, the thought process itself. Okay, uh, from my experience, going to see a lawyer blank blank minded is a complete waste of time. When I go through my questions with you, so exactly what do you have in your assets? Don't really know. Okay, what policies do you have? Not very sure. I think one with uh, with a big uh, uh, insurance company just on cross street, maybe. Maybe I bought one, you know, that has the same name as the supermarket, but I can't remember. Okay, okay, okay. All right, then. Uh, do you have uh, uh, do you uh, do you have a house? No, but I'm planning to buy a house. When? Not very sure. Next year, maybe. Depending on when um, uh, I'm going to get a bonus, alamak. So you come to see me for what? So the other way around is more consistent. Once you realize what your financials are. Mm. Okay. Where, uh, through, of course, through a financial planner, with, with your current financial situation, okay, uh, of course, to use the Malay word, tamba here and there, to be more consistent with what you plan in life, then you come to me to prepare the documentation so that when, when anything happens to you, all right, whatever you've planned with your financial planner is correctly reflected in your will, mm. you see. Or if alternatively speaking, okay, you, you realize that, look, I need to have a, a financial security in the event of my passing away to protect my family for debts or whatever. You secure that with a, a relevant policy, okay, with your financial planner, so that when you come to me, you know, when I pass away, I have policy number one to take care of that, policy number two to take care of something else, policy number three to take care of my family. Therefore, in my will, I want to write it this way. Yes, then as a lawyer, I understand, I know what to write, rather than, uh, I, I think I have a policy, you know, that, that sounds like uh, a name in the US. For how much? Can't really remember. When do you buy it? I think my father bought for me. For how much? Let me check with him. Oh, okay. Oh, where is he? Oh, he passed away. I forgot. Uh. <gasps> it's happened. 
Yep, yep. It is, it is. It is. And, and I think that that is the key thumb rule where we always ask, can you please give me your portfolio or let me do the portfolio because we need to know where exactly you have uh, yes. policies that, you know, you need to be sure of. And I think that's where, you know, you get all the facts right in place. Yes. yes. And uh, uh, just a question, Michael. I, it's a bit technical, but I thought I just want to ask you this question uh, because, um, uh, you know, for example, I'll just give you an, uh, an example. Um, uh, I have this person, or maybe it's myself, you know, I have a property that I bought for two million and, yes. you know, my loan is for one million and I, I decided that today I'm going to get a, uh, you know, a policy to insure me for one million so that if anything happens to me, uh, yes. that loan can be paid. But, you know, mortgage loan, as I go on, maybe uh, in the next four years, maybe my loan went down. Yes. So, if assuming, can I put in my will that, you know, I have a policy that covers me for one million so I would like this policy to pay whatever remainder loan, which could be 400,000 by the time I'm gone. And the remaining proceeds, please be divided within A, B and C beneficiary. Can it be done in a will as well? Yes, uh, you, can al you can always provide for contingencies. Mm. In other words, okay, not to sound very colloquial, but in your will, you must be as kiasu kiasi as possible. Uh, depending on the insurance policy terms, maybe uh, it automatically will be applied to your loan anyway. So mm. you, you, you need to be clear. And even if you're not, doesn't matter. You can always provide a backdoor clause. That's why I call it. La. In the event that there is an excess after the repayment of the loan from policy 1234, right? and uh, then I would like to will it away in the following gifts, proportions or what have you. It's possible. Mm. Anything is possible. Even if you provide a contingency which does not work, it's all right. Just means that it just doesn't work. For instance, if your insurance, for some strange reason, okay, your loan's a million, but because you plan in such a way that you only bought $500,000 just to protect it because you think that it's going to be paid down to five hundred anyway. It turns out that, 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 that despite your excess clause, it turns out that your loan is still six hundred. And then all 500 is all eaten up by your by your mortgage anyway. So it just mm. means that the clause is just not workable. It, it, it doesn't matter. Maybe waste of ink and waste of paper, waste of toner. But that's about it. Okay. It Go ahead. Write it. Be at mm. peace. So that in the event that there is even 50 cents, even if it's $50, at least your executor realized, oh yeah, daddy has already stated if there's an excess, it should be given this way. Well, not much. Lah, but still, I've, I've got directions here to do so. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Michael. Uh, um, at least I'm the right spot because I had a couple of. Uh, I always have cases where you know they have uh, um, excess or they wonder you know if there's an excess. So you know at least they are clear that you can always write it on the wheel whether it's applicable yes. is another thing. But you know you can always put it down there, and that gives right. you the ease of mind. Correct. Let me give you an example. All right. So let's say at this stage in a uh, point in time you have five assets, all right? Um, mm. Let's say, okay, five cars, five very expensive cars, collector's cars, they always increase in value. But as you go through your life, you've already sold two of them, all right? So in your will, you mentioned five cars, supposed to be given away, but you already sold two. It just means that those two those two directions for those two cars just not does not work, it fails. It mm. doesn't mean your will has failed, just that those two points have failed, that's it. All right. And Michael, uh, what's your advice if you talk about somebody who, for example, makes a will at the age of 40 and, you know, things change, right? Situation change and everything. Uh, do you advise that it's always good to review your will maybe like every five years, every certain number of years, you know, to review to see if there's any major changes and can those changes be done on the will? Okay. Um, as, as we all go through life, many things need to be reviewed. Uh, your occupation, you might want to review review occupation. You're, you're not fit for it, okay? You don't like it. Uh, you want to review your children's education when you realize that, hey, uh, this school that doesn't fit my son, uh, he's just too intelligent for it. Same with financial planning, life planning. Life changes in ways that you will never imagine, perhaps, a lot of the time. Yes, it would be prudent to remember and think about relooking your will from time to time. What that time to time is, it's your life. I can't really tell you. But when something big happens, perhaps you might want to relook it. Now, in the old days, when wills were written longhand, it's damn leche uh, to rewrite the will all over again. So in the old days, there was a system called a codicil, okay, meaning tail part. So what would happen is you wrote a will by longhand when you're 20, okay? 
when you're 35, oh, you, uh, I'm not going to write this by longhand. So you write a codicil to say, okay, for paragraph five, instead of giving to my son, I've already given to him something else. I want to give this to my daughter instead. That will be in a codicil read with a will. But nowadays, with instant laser printers, bubble jet, and what have you, okay, you can reprint your entire will all over again. <laughs> Makes no difference. You can revamp. You can replace your executor. You can increase your executors. You can. Uh, uh, you're so angry with your elder son for for marrying without asking for your permission. You can cut your elder son off. Anything that you want to do can be changed at any time, provided you are of sound mind. And more importantly, it is the correct thing to do that you will not regret the next day. You know, you change it because you're angry. <laughs> the next day you regret, no la, my elder son quite okay la. Then you want to change it back. You know, so be 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 well thought out. And and I think this answers uh, the question we have Narin. Uh, hi Narin, thank you for joining us. And he has a question: How early would uh, would you advise a person to get a will in place? Uh, well, uh, before I ask Michael, I think my answer will be that it, there's never earlier. You know, it's it's now or you know. So Michael, you know, for your for for this question, what do you think? How early would you advise a person to get a will in place? Um, okay, from my experience, I that there is an argument that uh, there is some uh, right by date, if I may use the phrase right by date. Maybe if you're fresh out of army. Okay, or with, with due respect to the army personnel, you just started out work, not much finances, nothing much. Maybe a will may not be that terribly important, financially speaking, but you might want to use a will as a vehicle you know, to express your, uh, your emotions to your family after you pass away. In that sense, okay, you might want to do a will so young at 21, 22. But I think the earliest right by date would be when you get married. Because now you're responsible for somebody else. You'll be engaging in asset accumulation, debt acquisition together with your partner. I think that period may not be instantly the next day after you marry, but that period will be a good time to write a will together with your partner to plan for each other. Then at each stage when children are born, to at least relook, all right? And as the children become older, to relook and maybe amend because they could be older to receive uh, their own share you know, of, of, your, of your estate if you, if you deem them fit enough. So mm. at earliest right by date, at the moment my view is uh, I think marriage would be a, an earliest right by date. All right. The other right by date would be if let's say you're one of those uh, internet uh, entrepreneurs okay, and then you're not married but because of your business savvy, okay, you're already rolling in, in all sorts of assets, uh, uh, businesses, uh, and debts. Yes, you will need to consider a will because if anything happens to you, who's going to manage your website? Who's going to manage your business? Yes, as a business person, Sakti, you're right. There's no such thing as, uh, an, uh, as an appropriate time. Do it now. You will never know what will happen to you tomorrow. A taxi runs a red light, that's it. Five centimeters faster, f uh, uh, further ahead, that taxi would have knocked your brains out. Five centimeters behind, you might be paralyzed. For business yeah. people, maybe you're right. Do it now. On the family side, maybe just after marriage. Just my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks, Michael. And I think uh, the next question was specific to business people, you know, with the challenges that business owners, um, uh, individual face with the current situation. Uh, let us just focus on the business owners. Is it all the more important to look into uh, estate planning? Um, you know, especially with the current challenges that we have now, you know, with the COVID-19 going on um, and so on. Uh, what are your take on this? Okay. Um, to pre-answer this question, uh, it's always uh, important uh, in good times or bad for business owners to always think two steps ahead financially. Mm. Uh, whether it is the business-wise or or life planning or estate planning, all right. Uh, to say that it is more so important during bad times, in a sense, like it, it is a tautology. It's, it has always been important. Maybe just that for a huge sector of business people, it never entered their heads. Now they're in this uh, difficult situation, what do they do? All right. The easiest 
and I'll, I'll be honest with you, the easiest thing to do is cap expenditure, don't worry about buying uh, additional insurance. That's the easiest thing to do because it is another, it is another uh, expense point, all right? Yeah. But depending on, on how you and your financial planner look at your business liabilities problems, then you, you might need to arrive at an affordable policy so that, you know, assuming that you can get out of this in one piece, there's mm. something that will protect you if something happens to you. May not be complete, complete is the best. Uh. It may not be complete, but enough, you know, to save your wife, you know, embarrassment, your family, secure your family, settle something for your business, okay, and then and, and manage it correctly. So to say that's more important now, like I said, it's a bit tautologist, it's always been important, but now maybe the likelihood of trying to avoid it might be greater because I've only got 50 cents to pay $2 of debt. Where am I going to give you 20 cents to buy insurance? And yet, yeah. maybe just take 5 cents to buy insurance, it may help a bit. Right? Mm. But, but that as a lawyer, I can't help you. You need to speak with your financial planner about that. How much, how little, your budget. Okay, so that's where your third limb, your third tool is more important. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Michael. Um, I mean, I mean, since we, we touched on this, I would like to also just share of my personal experience for the viewers, which is true. Uh, currently, I think business owners, they are looking into cutting costs, you know, um, uh, and focus my available resources in areas where I really got to take care of. So, you know, uh, the last thing that I would like to talk about or, you know, uh, to think about is actually any other additional costs, which includes uh, insurance and everything. But when it becomes a case like what you say to put a small portion out to just mitigate the risk that could be even worse off then uh, this is where we come into play and in my experience the last three months what happened was that um uh, i'll be upfront uh, i've not been selling a lot of insurance but i've been actually advising people how, how their existing plans can be useful at this moment of time yeah. so um but those were for those guys who already had things in place so, you know, I could advise them, say, hey, look, you know, uh, it's a good thing that you have this and this and, you know, this is what we can do. Um, but again, I do go out and advise those who have nothing in place yet to say, you know, it's time to think about it and slowly work on it. You don't have to have 100%, but at least start something somewhere. So, correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that was where uh, I want to talk about. And, and thanks, Michael. Uh, I, I mean, there was a lot of sharing today. Um, I think uh, both for the uh, business owners as well as for individuals, um, yes. you know, and, and I think that's the key, right? Uh, uh, because from my experience where we, we had our chat even yesterday itself, like a lot of people do not take action, not because they do not want to, but they do not know or they are not well informed of it. I think that was the key focus why we had this live chat for the first place. Yes. So uh, thank you, Michael. But I, I just want a personal question to you uh, over yes. the years. Michael, so what do you want to be remembered for, you know? Um, you know, your legacy, you know, one day, you know, uh, has it ever occurred to you? I mean, it's a question that I always ask all our guests, you know, like, what would you like to be remembered for? You're very unfair, are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the first time I've been asked that question. I'll be honest with you. You know, like, what would I like to be remembered for? Hmm, I would like to be remembered for liking Ultraman. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, I just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Um... Uh, I but I always thought that you liked uh, Iron Man more than Ultraman. I mean, that's my thoughts. Oh, uh, no, no, Ultraman. Uh, Iron Man oh. only, only recently in the Marvel Universe. Oh, <laughs> I, I shouldn't be plugging them. Sorry about that. Uh, well, to, uh, to be well, seriously, to remember, well, maybe in whatever I've done, it's always because I've always wanted the help. That's all. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. And I think uh, you are the journey because I personally, uh, being your client as well, um, uh, just for those of you uh, who uh, who realized that my name changed uh, over the years is because I went to Michael and said, Michael, it's time for me to change my name. And, you know, <laughs> and, you <did. laughs> and we had a long, yeah, yeah. And we had a good conversation about that. Why you want to change? And, but, but yes, Michael, I mean, definitely in my personal experience, more of a, not only as a partner, you know, in terms of uh, uh, bringing clients and everything, but I, I think even as a, as a, as a client of yours, uh, I personally feel that you have been always there to, 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 to share more things than what is expected of you at the situation, you know, and I really appreciate that, you know, and I always feel grateful for that, you know. Thank you, Michael, so much. And any word of advice for our business owners and individuals who are currently engaged in our chat, Michael? I think as a start, I think the horizon 
of every business owner. Uh, I've I have okay, uh, to 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 share with you lah. I've already crossed the age where uh, transferring monies from OA to retirement account has already started. I'll stop there. But at this point in time, looking backwards, the one thing I regret, all right, which I hope business owners, both uh, uh, long-time business owners and business owners who start out is, don't worry about your next paycheck only. Yes, you should, you know. Uh, but you should try and look forward to beyond your participation in your business and think what will happen to the business if I'm not around whether I'm whether I'm not around because I'm in the old folks home I'm not around because I passed away then what will happen to my secretary what will happen to my associate what will happen to the rental I think a lot of business people don't think that far they only think to the next client to the next paycheck to the next invoice you know, to the next collection. Then weekend, wow, Sunday, sleep late. Then <laughs> Monday, next invoice. I think we yeah. don't have the discipline like all the bigger businessmen in, in the US perhaps to think really far ahead. All right, I've started a business. What will happen to the business if tomorrow I drop dead? Mm. I don't think we have the discipline yet. Mm. Right. I, I think definitely something that uh, is important for business owners. And I guess, like what you say, it may not be the culture, but I think it's important. And uh, and thanks, Michael, for this advice because that gives me a lot of uh, a clear purpose of what I can do. You know, yeah. prompting okay. and asking, them. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, prompting and asking these questions to you know my fellow business owners out there. You know, it's like uh, uh, thank you, Michael, once again. And we actually have Evan uh, who wanted to you know personally thank you for all the things that you have shared. Thank you, Evan, for joining us. And um, you know, uh, uh, it's great that, you know, Michael has given you new insights about your life, you know. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Glad, glad to have helped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would like to uh, share this with all our uh, viewers uh, once again. For those of you, you know, uh, feel free. Uh, I've actually uh, put out uh, Michael's mobile as well as his office number. Feel free to contact Michael in terms of, you know, you have any questions, you know, you've got existing wheel you're thinking about or any other services. You know, I will personally say that you can just, you know, uh, give Michael a call. Uh, I mean, have a chat with him uh, if you have any uh, questions or if you have any services that you, you require. And um, I will specifically also uh, put this in our chat, that the context in our chat uh, comments later so that if you get to revisit this chat at a later time, you will be able to, you know, see the contact numbers. Uh, with that, thank you, Michael, so much. Um, you know, I, 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 I always enjoy, you know, my time having conversations with you. Uh, it yeah. didn't seem like one hour, you know, we had a one hour yeah. life. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just like, wow, you know, it's like one hour. But, but uh, you know, thank you so much for the sharing. And, um, uh, and I believe that a lot of viewers would have, um, you know, not only just got information, but I think you have given enough uh, pointers for them to start thinking about, you know, what they should do. Uh, and, and what they can do uh, for the way. So, you know, thank you so much, Michael. Mm. Oh, well, you're very welcome. Oh, it was it was quite fun doing this with you. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> no problems, Michael. So we'll keep in touch, Michael. Uh, um, and uh, definitely, you know, uh, we will have coffee one of these days and we'll have a longer chat off, okay. uh, off one. Okay. <laughs> and, and let me All know right. uh, how you want to change your name to something else. I'm glad. Uh, what, <laughs> once is enough. Once is enough. Oh, yeah. uh, but it was a nice experience, though. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Thanks, thanks, Michael. Okay. Bye bye. Right. Bye. Bye, everyone. All right. It was an awesome session. Uh, definitely, I like to say that, uh, you know, I never cease to uh, enjoy my conversations with Michael. Uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of sharing, uh, both for individuals and business owners. So I strongly suggest that you can take this time to start reviewing, you know, some of this information. Um, in terms of, you know, the importance of will, the importance of why you need to have a will and even the process itself. So, um, of course, as much as being a financial planner myself, I'm, you know, I have currently helped with my fellow team, uh, many um, uh, business owners and individuals to do up their will, you know, uh, to, to plan for their will and, and even, you know, uh, using the other tools. So, um, hope you benefited from this session. And uh, as I always say, right, no live chat is ever 
um, uh, complete uh, without you, you know, our viewers. So thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me. And uh, please do leave your comments and feedback so we can do it better just for you. And as I always say, if you have a specific um, expert or uh, from a certain industry, feel free to you know just message me, PM me, uh, so that we can actually make sure that we get uh, such experts up, just like how we got Michael after uh, quite a few of you have requested uh, for us to get a lawyer to talk about wheels, about LP and so on. So um, with that, uh, so remember, there's no one before me and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only yours truly, Shakti. Now, see you next week. Keep moving forward. And uh, for the rest of you guys, you know, advance. Happy National Day. See ya.